Warning, this episode contains content that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Decidedly, one of the most notorious and infamous serial killers in history, his appetite for dominance and control over those he desired led to a series of depraved and cruel murders with a degree of vulgarity that is rarely ever seen. In tonight's episode, we discuss the Milwaukee cannibal, Jeffrey Dahmer. Let's open the serial killer file. Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer was born on May 21st, 1960 as the oldest of two sons to Joyce and Lionel Dahmer. From an early age, Jeffrey noted the tense relationship between his parents, both of whom doted on him but were also emotionally neglectful. His father's studies in chemistry at Marquette University often kept him away, while his mother suffered from various ailments, including an addiction to tranquilizers, and she was described as argumentative, attention-seeking, and neurotic. His parents relentlessly argued, with his mother needing constant attention from her husband. As a result, Jeffrey grew up a withdrawn, reserved child with few friends in his early years. Jeffrey showed a fascination with animals and insects while very young, collecting bugs in jars, and later gathering roadkill carcasses with friends. Fascinated with their bones and how they worked, he dissected them either in his home, in the tool shed, or the woods behind their house. His father, thinking his son was taking an interest in scientific endeavors, encouraged this, and even taught him how to bleach and preserve animal bones. During his high school years, Jeffrey was known as a lonely outcast with a reputation for pulling pranks. Teachers in his freshman year regarded him as polite and highly intelligent, but apathetic towards school and friendships. However, at age 14, Jeffrey began abusing alcohol heavily and often smuggled beer and liquor into school in his coat lining. He quickly realized he was gay during puberty, and in his late teens he began having dark sexual fantasies, involving domination and assaulting an unconscious person, gradually linking dissection into these fantasies. On one occasion, he hid with a baseball bat, intending to attack, render unconscious, and sexually assault a male jogger that he had found attractive. Though he didn't carry out this plan, it was his first noted desire to attack another person. His grades declined in his senior year due to the impending separation of his parents. Despite attending marriage counseling, they ultimately divorced. The separation started cordially but soon turned to fighting in front of Jeffrey and his younger brother David, which resulted in Lionel moving to a local motel. Shortly before his high school graduation in May of 1978, Jeffrey turned 18 and Joyce was awarded custody of David and she moved in with relatives in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. Jeffrey's first murder occurred on June 18, 1978. Living in the family home alone in the aftermath of his parents' divorce, he picked up 18-year-old Stephen Hicks who was hitchhiking to a concert in a nearby town. Jeffrey lured Stephen to his home under the guise of drinking together. When Stephen tried to leave, Jeffrey bludgeoned him unconscious with a 10-pound dumbbell and strangled him to death. After pleasuring himself over the body, he dissected it in his crawl space. He buried the body in a shallow grave in his backyard for several weeks, but later dissolved the flesh in acid and flushed the remains down the toilet before crushing and scattering the bones in a nearby forest. Soon after Stephen's murder, Lionel Dahmer moved back in with his new fiancée, and Jeffrey enrolled at Ohio State University as a business major. However, Jeffrey only lasted one term, dropping out due to his rampant alcohol abuse. The following year, Jeffrey enlisted in the Army, training as a medical specialist at Fort Sam Houston before being sent to Bombholder, West Germany on July 13, 1979, to serve as a combat medic. 
His alcoholism eventually resulted in his formal discharge in March of 1981. Years later, two fellow soldiers reported being sexually assaulted by Jeffrey during their time in Germany. Returning to the United States on March 24, 1981, Jeffrey felt unable to face his father in the wake of his failed army service, so he decided to move to Miami Beach, Florida. He spent six months there, working in a deli and living in a motel, but his alcohol abuse resulted in his eviction. He lived on the beach while continuing to work before finally returning home to live with his father and stepmother in September. Jeffrey continued heavily drinking and was arrested for drunken disorderly conduct shortly after his return. His father tried to help, but ultimately, in 1981, sent Jeffrey to live with his grandmother in West Allis, Wisconsin. At first, the change proved positive. Jeffrey found work and lived amicably with his grandmother, despite her objection to his drinking. However, things didn't stay that way. Jeffrey was arrested for exposing himself to a crowd of women and children at the Wisconsin State Fair Park, and later in 1986, after exposing himself to two young boys, for which he received one year's probation and mandatory counseling. Jeffrey frequented the Milwaukee gay scene in early 1985, having reawakened his fantasies of sexual assault and domination. He visited bathhouses, but found himself dissatisfied with his partner's movements during the sexual encounters. By mid-1986, he began drugging and assaulting the men. The bathhouses revoked his membership, and he turned to hotel rooms for his depraved rendezvous. During this time, Jeffrey also attempted to steal the body of a recently deceased teenager to keep the body in his home. However, this plan failed because the soil was too hard to dig up. On September 15, 1987, Jeffrey invited 25-year-old Stephen Tuomi back to his room at the Ambassador Hotel. Only intending to drug and assault the man, Jeffrey found Stephen dead the next morning. His chest crushed in and Jeffrey's hands and arms covered in damning bruises. Having no recollection of the murder, Jeffrey left the body in the hotel room and went to purchase a suitcase. He transported the body to his grandmother's house, where he spent hours dismembering and disposing of the body in trash bags. He kept the head, however, cleaning and preserving it in a bleach detergent solution in hopes of keeping it for sexual purposes but it was too brittle and was eventually disposed of. After, Jeffrey found himself seeking out men to murder, luring them to their deaths at his grandmother's home, all without her ever finding out. His next victim was a 14-year-old prostitute named James Doxtater, whom he lured to his home under the guise of paying him for nude photos and sex. Jeffrey drugged and strangled him to death, hiding his body in the cellar for a week before disposing of the remains the same way he had with Stevens. On March 24, 1988, Jeffrey met 22-year-old Richard Guerrero outside of a gay bar and offered him $50 to hang out with him for the night. He drugged and strangled Richard to death, performed acts of necrophilia on the body, and repeated the same process of disposing it afterwards. One victim managed to escape thanks to Jeffrey's grandmother, who arrived home after he gave the young man a coffee laced with sedatives. Jeffrey attempted to hide the fact that he wasn't alone, but his grandmother noticed his guest, leading to his survival. In September of 1988, Jeffrey's grandmother grew tired of him bringing men home and of the terrible smells emitting from the basement and garage. She asked him then to move out. He found residence in an apartment on North 25th Street, and less than a day after moving in, he was arrested for drugging and molesting 13-year-old Kyson Synthesumphone, who escaped after Jeffrey enticed him into the apartment to pose nude for photos. Jeffrey was convicted of sexual assault and enticing a child for immoral purposes in January of 1989. Between his conviction and his sentencing, he temporarily moved back in with his grandmother and killed his fifth victim, 26-year-old Anthony Sears. 
The pair returned to Jeffrey's grandmother's house where they engaged in oral sex before Jeffrey drugged and strangled him to death. Jeffrey found Anthony extremely attractive and was determined to preserve some part of his victim. He attempted to flay Anthony's body before resorting to his usual disposal method, though he was successful in preserving his head and his genitals, which he stowed in his work locker. In May of 1989, Jeffrey was sentenced to one year in prison and five years probation, although he was permitted to retain his job at a chocolate factory. After 10 months, he was paroled in March of 1990 and began his probation. He moved into an apartment closer to his work, in apartment number 213. Within a week of his move, Jeffrey killed his sixth victim, 32-year-old Raymond Smith. He offered Raymond $50 for sex and brought him to his apartment where he drugged him and strangled him. He purchased a Polaroid camera and the following day took photos of Raymond's dead body, after which he dismembered and disposed of it by dissolving it in a container filled with acid, but not without preserving the skull, which he displayed in his bedroom alongside Anthony Sears. On June 14, 1990, Jeffrey murdered an acquaintance, 27-year-old Edward Smith. After drugging and strangling him, he froze Edward's body to try to prevent it from holding moisture, but this failed. Three months later, Jeffrey met 22-year-old Ernest Miller and offered him $50 to let him listen to his heart. When he failed to drug Ernest with two sleeping pills, Jeffrey slashed his throat. After taking photographs of Ernest's body and dismembering it, he not only preserved the bones, but kept portions of his flesh and heart to consume. He also saved and painted Ernest's skull. His next victim was 22-year-old David Thomas, a young father whom he invited to his apartment for drinks, offering to pay him for nude photographs. Jeffrey admitted he wasn't attracted to David, but he killed him to avoid an angry reaction. He only photographed and disposed of his body afterwards. For five months after this, Jeffrey was unable to lure victims to his apartment, and he began to experience anxiety, depression, and suicidal thoughts. On February 18, 1991, Jeffrey spotted 17-year-old Curtis Strotter at a bus stop, offering him money in exchange for photographing him nude and having sex. He drugged and strangled him, dismembered his body, photographed the process, and preserved his skull, hands, and genitals. On April 7th, he drugged 19-year-old Errol Lindsay and horrifically drilled a hole into his skull and poured muriatic acid into it, hoping to induce a permanent submissive state for his sexual pleasure. This did not work, and when Errol awoke and complained of a headache, Jeffrey drugged and strangled him. He kept his skull and flayed his body in an attempt to preserve his skin. This, however, was unsuccessful. Jeffrey's killing accelerated. He murdered 31-year-old Anthony Hughes on May 24th, leaving his body to decompose in his bedroom for several days. Three days later, he lured 14-year-old Conorak Synthasymphone, the younger brother of the boy whom Jeffrey had molested three years before, to his apartment, drugged him, and reattempted the same experiment he had on Errol to render the boy a zombie. Jeffrey left Conorak alone with Anthony Hughes' body to purchase alcohol. During this time, Conorak escaped and wandered down the street, naked, bleeding, and disoriented. Bystanders called 911, but soon after, Jeffrey returned and attempted to bring Conorak back to the apartment, but three women prevented this. When two officers arrived, Jeffrey convinced them that Conorak was his 19-year-old boyfriend and they had a drunken argument. The woman who found Conorak protested, but the officers foolishly covered the boy up and took him back to the apartment. Despite noting the foul smell emanating from within and Conorak's brain-damaged and drugged state, they left him in Jeffrey's apartment. Conorak was strangled to death immediately following this, his body disposed of along with Anthony's. On June 30th, Jeffrey picked up 20-year-old Matt Turner at a bus station in Chicago, proposing to take him to Milwaukee for a professional photo shoot. Jeffrey murdered him, keeping his head and organs in bags in the freezer. On July 5th, he invited 23-year-old Jeremiah Weinberger to his home to spend the weekend with him. 
He drugged and attempted his zombie experiment on him by injecting boiling water into his skull. Jeremiah died two days later as a result. On July 15th, Jeffrey met 24-year-old Oliver Lacey and offered to photograph him nude, and Jeffrey attempted to chloroform him before strangling him. He engaged in necrophilia with Oliver's body before dismembering and storing the parts in his refrigerator and freezer. Four days later, Jeffrey was let go from his job, but things only continued on. He lured 25-year-old Joseph Braidhoft in his apartment where he strangled him to death and left his body on his bed. He later decapitated the body, placed the head in his refrigerator, and dissolved him and the previous two victims in acid. Jeffrey Dahmer's undoing came on July 22, 1991, when 32-year-old Tracy Edwards agreed to accompany him to his apartment under the guise of drinking. Soon after his arrival, he found his right arm handcuffed as he was brought into Jeffrey's bedroom. Jeffrey threatened him with a knife and held him hostage. Tracy placated Jeffrey, telling him he was his friend and wouldn't attempt to leave. Eventually, Tracy convinced Jeffrey to let him sit with him in the living room. As soon as Jeffrey was distracted, Tracy punched him and ran. He flagged down two police officers who were unable to remove the handcuffs. Tracy brought them back to the apartment to have them obtain the key from his attacker. Jeffrey allowed the officers in and indicated the key was in his bedside table. When he attempted to retrieve it himself, one of the officers told him to back off while the other entered the bedroom. To the officer's horror, he discovered the Polaroid photos of Jeffrey's victims in an open drawer and realized they had been taken in the apartment. Stunned, he brought them out to show the other officer, causing Jeffrey to attack them both. Jeffrey was overpowered and arrested, during which he stated to the officers, For what I did, I should be dead. The subsequent investigation revealed the horrifying nightmare hidden within apartment 213. Four severed heads, seven preserved and painted skulls, numerous preserved body parts, frozen flesh and organs, a 57-gallon containing three bodies being dissolved in acid, and 74 Polaroid photos altogether detailed the horrendous desecration of his victims' remains. During questioning on July 23rd, Jeffrey readily confessed to all 17 murders, including that of Stephen Hicks over a decade prior. In over 60 hours of interviews, he detailed how he killed his victims, dismembering and engaging in necrophilia with their corpses, dissolving their bodies and preserving the parts he intended to keep. He revealed he planned to build a private altar in his living room, adorned with his victims' skulls and bones. Jeffrey Dahmer was initially charged with four counts of murder, but the number rose to 11. A further charge of murder was added when partial remains of Stephen Hicks were identified in Ohio in September. Jeffrey was not charged with the attempted murder of Tracy Edwards or the murder of Stephen Tuomi. At his preliminary hearing on January 13th the following year, he pled guilty, but insane, to 15 counts of murder. The trial commenced on January 30th, 1992. Though he pled guilty, the debate over whether he was mentally ill was contested by the prosecutor. They argued Jeffrey was capable of recognizing his wrongdoings, stating he showed premeditation and calculation in his crimes. His defense argued he was a man overcome by mental illness and impulses he had no control over. Numerous psychiatrists for both sides had varying diagnoses for Jeffrey, ranging from substance use disorder to various personality disorders. In the end, on February 15th, the jury ruled Jeffrey Dahmer was sane and he was sentenced to 15 counts of life imprisonment with an additional 10 years for his first two counts of murder and an additional 70 for the remainder. He later pled guilty for the murder of Stephen Hicks in Ohio on May 1st, sentencing him to a 16th life imprisonment term. Jeffrey was imprisoned at Columbia Correctional Institution in Portage, Wisconsin, and was held in solitary confinement for his first year in prison for his own safety. Eventually, he was transferred to a less secure unit and assigned to work detail. He became a born-again Christian while in prison, 
expressing apathy and a disregard for his own safety, declaring remorse to the prison minister for his crimes. Jeffrey Dahmer died on November 28, 1994, when he and a fellow inmate were bludgeoned to death with a pipe by Christopher Scarver. Christopher, a convicted murderer with known psychiatric problems, claimed the voice of God told him to kill both men because Jeffrey was hated by inmates and staff and he was remorseless for his crimes. A number of inmates attested to Jeffrey's cocky attitude. Jeffrey Dahmer was 34 years old. That's all for now. If you'd like to help keep Seriously Strange and all of its sub-series on YouTube, I need your help. YouTube has been targeting and demonetizing videos all across my channel and making it harder and harder for me to keep making this content for you. If you'd like to join the fight to keep YouTube creepy, please see the link to my Patreon at patreon.com slash robdyke linked in the description below for more information. Thank you for listening. Now be sure to check out another one of my videos, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel now, because you won't want to miss what's next. And I'll see you next time.